All right, guys, what is up? I'm CordyD93. Oops, forgot my pop filter. Hang on a sec. And there we go. Okay, super professional. Um, yeah, we are back on Pokemon TCG Online. It has been a little while. I've been uploading my um, PBL matches. I'll keep doing that. I They have not announced pairings for this next week, so I haven't been able to build yet. Um, but I want to play some more Pokemon. So... Hopefully I sound a little bit better because I got my mic working. I don't know what was wrong with it. Uh, but it's this weekend. I went to a league challenge. It was really tiny. I won. I actually didn't exactly want to. Um, <laughs> my friend Keon was there and he's going for top 16 in terms of CP in North America this year. And uh, he actually has five league challenge wins. So he just needs one more. And so if I got to play him, I was going to scoop to him just so that he'd have a better chance of winning. Um, you know, he's a really cool guy, and I'd, I'd love to see him get that stipend. And uh, basically the way it worked out, there were only three rounds, and there were four 2-0s. I did not get paired with him. And I, my resistance was apparently better, even though I played against my brother, who's a senior in one of the rounds. So I, I sniped him, and I, I stole 3 CP from him. So I, I got the win, he got 2nd place. Uh, my other brother got 4th place, and then John got 2nd place out of 2 seniors. So well done, guys. Really, really challenging. Um, no. So League Challenge is really small events. They're for fun. Um, not super competitive, but um, I want to share the list that I played. Not because I think it's important that it won a League Challenge, but because I think it's a good deck. It's a pretty good meta call right now, at least in my opinion. And I mean, you might want to change it up a little bit, but it's pretty cool. So here's what I played. Um, well, okay, hang on. Gotta make one change. Uh, this list has changed over time. Um, I actually had to drop out of uh, the Poke Beach, was it March tournament? I was actually playing a really close variation of this deck, and um, there's there's some internet issues where I couldn't play every week, and so I just dropped. Um, but this is what I was playing. It, it run a Zerark line, which you can definitely make an argument for running. But uh, I decided to mix it up a little bit. We are just going straight Turbo Darkrai, so I can't expose this guy. So um, hope, I'll, I'll go over the whole deck at the end again, in case you missed it. But here's Darkrai X. He's our main attacker. Um, for a DC or two colorless, we're doing Dark Pulse, which does 20 plus 20 for every darkness attached to all your Pokemon, which is very similar to Gardevoir, Mega Gardevoir EX's attack. Um, really, really cool attack. Um, if you get a bunch of energy on board, you can start two-shotting or even one-shotting things pretty quickly. Um, it's really strong. Also is the attack uh, Dark Head for a dark and a DCE. I can't say that. It does 80 and then 80 more if your opponent's active is asleep. Uh, earlier, this list ran Malamar EX so that you could attach energy, put them to sleep, and then Darkhead for 160. In my testing, I never really found that to be too relevant, and um, I, I really preferred to be more reliant on Darkhead if I was going to be using it. Uh, for example, to explain what I'm talking about, um, if you run like Darkrai, Malamar, Hypno, that sort of thing, where the focus of your deck is to use Dark Head and sleep them. Um, I found that to be more effective. You still do hit awkward numbers if you don't run Muscle Bands, because you need both the Stadium and the Fury Belt to hit 180, which I really did not like that. Um, and then you're also really weak to Hex Maniac. So on this, I mean, we could Dark Head, but almost always Dark Pulse is going to be stronger, so we're just focusing on this attack. Um, other attackers, yes, I'm running four different Evil Tall. <laughs> Three of them are the Oblivion Wing. This attack is really great because it attaches Darkness out of the discard onto something on our bench, so that lets us preserve energy for Dark Pulse. And then if we have to, we can Darkness Blade. I don't do that very often with this deck, but um, it's definitely possible. We run one Fright Knight Evil Tall. This is my favorite attacker in the deck. Uh, for a Dark and a DC, just like that other attack on Dark Ray X, we have Pitch Black Spear, which says 60 and 60 to a bench DX. And Fright Knight prevents my opponent's Pokemon active from having, or when it's active, uh, no Pokemon tool card has any effect. So 
this is great if you believe in waiting for 30 and it's a Joltik and they like and then you Lysander something out and you promote this evil doll, it dies. So assuming as the fighting fairy belt, that's what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so this guy's really cool. Uh, pretty easy to power up. We'll talk about that in a sec. And then we just run two of Evil Tall EX. Uh, you could probably drop this down to one. We don't use him very often, but he's still a really, really hard hitter. And there's definitely no reason to run less than one. Um, Night March would be the predominant reason too, but... Um, and I, I can't really think of very many other matchups in the Night March or like Manetric, where you really would look at this deck and say, man, I really wish I didn't have an Evil Tall. So, two's good. Um, and then we run one Seismic Toad EX. This, this is a slot that's changed around a lot. It was a Malamar. I actually ran a Cursed Eyes Absol for a while um, to help out with things like Night March because you can just move three damage counters wherever you want. Uh, but I threw a Toad in last minute, kind of. Um, you could definitely make an argument for either of those other Pokemon. You could put a lot of things in the slot. It doesn't even have to be a Pokemon. But just running one Toad is nice. Um, if your opponent isn't expecting you to play one, it can essentially win you a lot of games. We play Judge, as you can see me changing out in the beginning of the video because I forgot I had a Birch in here earlier. Uh, so Judge, Quaking Punch will beat Night March um, a significant amount of the time if they're like low on DCE and they're forced to use Puzzle of Time. Um, I mean, that always won't work in like a best of three, but you know, in a best of one setting, it's pretty good. And then two Shame DX, and you don't want to run more than that just because... I mean, you could. I've never had consistency issues with this deck. Uh, we run four max elixir. That's how this deck works. You look at the top six, attach a basic energy to something on your bench, shuffle the other cards. So we want to. Oh, well, these are all verse. I didn't even know that. <laughs> we want to hit all of our max elixirs, uh, particularly early on, just to hoard some energy, get some dark race powered up, and then swing for a significant amount of damage. Play Super Rod. Uh, Super Rod is actually really important in Max Elixir decks. I think it's really underrated um, and something people don't really talk about because if you don't hit your Elixirs early on, uh, you can late game Super Rod 3 energy back in and then guarantee you're going to hit those energies. So uh, this is a really good card. And then it's really flexible too. I run 2 Switch. Um, I think I was running 1 before. I mean, after the, I cut the Zorak line, I was only running 1. I just found myself struggling a lot if people would Lysander something fat like a Darkrai, or they kept Lysander my baby Voltals and I didn't have like float stones, so switch is nice. Um, I just really like switching cards. Four trainers mill, you know what it does. Same with Ultra Ball and VS Seeker, we won't go over those. One AZ for the same reason of switching, but uh, that'll also pick up really damaged things like Darkrai's, um, so that's good, or Evil Talls. One Delinquent, I really like this card. Um, I thought it was going to be a little bit better than it is. You know, it's not exactly a staple and everything, but with this kind of deck, um, especially with Toad, um, you know, if your opponent gets down to like three or four cards, you can delinquent punch them, and a lot of times that will just shut them out. Uh, so this is pretty good. Play one Hex, because it's good. One Judge, uh, we talked about Toad already, but Judge is just good shuffle draw, good hand disruption. Obviously, we'll want to play N when it comes out, but it's not legal yet. Two Lysander, uh, really important. And four Sycamore. I run four in just about everything. Play two Reverse Valley. Um, if you don't know what this does, we are only going to play it one way. It's not as flexible as Parallel City is. Uh, so we're going to actually place it the way it's currently facing, where all of our Dark Types do 10 more damage. Um, and then the other way, it just like reduces the damage your Metal Types take by 10. There aren't that many Metal Types in this metagame. And this actually has no effect against metal types, so like, I played against a scissor deck once and this just doesn't do anything because you do plus 10, they do, they take minus 10, so it's zero. Um, so that's relevant. Uh, this is nice for just swinging for magic numbers. Um, with Reverse Valley, we can Oblivion Wing for 40 or 50 with the Fighting Fury Belt. Um, Dark Ride can hit odd numbers, so it means 170 is a much more reasonable number to hit. Um, it's just, it's probably your best stadium right now. It's, it's really strong. And I don't bench Shamans. I don't always bench two Shamans, so Parallel City doesn't seem that important to bump your EXs off. So this is a stadium of choice. We are in one EXP share. Um, you could run a second. 
I think I originally was. And the list that this is kind of merged with, because there's like a combination of my list and then some European players list. Um, he ran two. Um, I definitely stole the idea from him. I really liked it. I didn't like two though. Um, and generally you want to stick this on things like Fright Night Evil Tall. Um, obviously it doesn't do anything that's active, but on the bench. This just preserves a dark energy. Um, and there are definitely ways your opponent can play around it, but if they don't knock it off, sometimes it'll save you some damage. Pretty cool. Then we run three Fighting Fairy Belts. This is really, really important. This is a great card against things like Night March, where Darkrai EX bumps up to 220 HP and has Psychic Resistance. So their Joltics really have to hit you hard because their Pumpkaboos do significantly less damage. And it's just a really good card in general. Uh, you can slap it on anything, we only play basics. And this energy line is atrocious, I apologize. I don't have that many cool energies online. Uh, I got the two fancy DCs, and then I would play 11 Darks because we don't want to miss Max Elixirs. There's the whole view again. I will probably miss Max Elixirs anyways and be mad, but <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. So, um, I didn't even name this deck yet. It's new deck one. Okay. We'll leave it like that. That's funny. Okay. And. You can see I was testing Greninja last. Um, I don't have my own list for it, I've been playing someone else's. But if I do, maybe I can cover that at some point. I really like Greninja. If I can get my Greninja breaks, I would definitely be playing that. Um, but yeah. Maybe after... I'm playing at Ev League tomorrow and I'll be playing my Turbo Reshiram list, so or Turbo Reshiram Giratina list, so maybe I will show you guys that at some point. By the way, we'll, we'll see. I've got some time now, so I might be able to record more. Uh, we're going to lose the coin flip, so probably going second. That's fine. Uh, if we start Oblivion Wing Evil Tall, that's actually pretty good. We don't. We have the option to start Toad. I don't think there's any reason to. Um, hmm. I don't know what my opponent's name is. Maris Yonix? Okay, we'll, we'll just start Darkrai and then end our turn. Or, say we're done. Not end our turn. There's a Giratina, so... Probably don't need Toad. This could be Toadtina. Um, this could be some Turbo variant. Uh, I think based off of the um, preview we got, it looks like Toadtina to me, but you never want to trust that. Uh, it can be very deceiving. Here's an Ultra Ball. Let's see if we grab something like a Hoopa. Yes. I mean, we did see Psychic, so I had to assume we were in Hoopa. So if this is Totina, I'd expect him to grab like a Double Toad Shaman, something like that. Uh, because Giratina's not going to be the strongest attacker here. It blocks us out of our tool cards, but um, then, yeah, I was right. Uh, Toad is just stronger um, because he requires less energy, so Evil Tall X swings for a lot less damage. Here's a setup for three. He discarded the Finding Fury Belt, which seems important in this matchup, so he must have some pretty good cards in his hand, otherwise he wouldn't do that. Um, maybe he's got a few VS Seekers, that sort of thing that he's trying to hold on to. And turn one Judge. So, if he doesn't get an energy attachment, we're in a pretty good position, depending on how we draw. And yeah, this looks fine. Here's a Super Scoop Up, and Tails. So that's really good for us. He's going to Headringer or Darkrai, that's alright. He actually has a second shame in his hand, so he's going to be able to draw up, that's okay. Uh, we are also going to search out a shaman. he does get the attachment, so that's unfortunate. So a better turn for my opponent than it looked like it was going to be. Crushing Hammer, it's a really obnoxious card. And he looks like he plays a split of Muscle Band and Fighting Fear Belt. Alright, so we are going to Ultra Ball. Definitely taking a Shaman. Let's see what we have prized. We have two Dark Rides, both Evil Tall One, two, three, four. Looks like we got everything. Uh, we'll go ahead and bench his Evil Tall because he's pretty strong in this matchup. Um, do we want to take anything off the Trainer's Mail? We could take the AZ. Actually, yeah, let's take the AZ. That seems pretty good. And then we will play the Shaman first. Hopefully we can get an Evil Ball and then easy up this Darkrai. Um, or not. 
Okay, never mind. There is one max elixir. And okay, so we hit it. Oops, I forgot. You're supposed to like look. It doesn't. Obviously, and when you're actually playing with the cards, you just pick up everything and then you see, oh, I have. The, these are the other five cards, but in PTC Joe, it like doesn't do it automatically, so I forgot. Um, that's okay. This is a really good hand. Um, okay, let's do this. I want to play the Max Elixir last. Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. So like, it just shows me the one RG. I should be always clicking this to see what we have. I mean, I kind of know what's in the deck, but it's, it's just better to do this. Uh, this is going to be a big evil ball. So let's take the AZ, and let's take the Sycamore. Uh, playing those VA Seekers is really good, and my opponent just concedes. Uh, so we had a really fast first turn. Um, yeah, so cool. We beat Totina. Ooh, got a pack of Roaring Skies. Uh, I'll, I'll open them up, up at the end. I don't think I have any other packs to open, but man, I've not been playing a whole lot this uh past few days. That's okay. Uh, we're playing against Breaker Mold. Cool name. Uh, sounds a lot like Mold Breaker. So we, we saw Grass, Psychic, and Colorless. Um, kind of reminds me of Rizzy and Genesect. Like, older Rizzy and Genesect, when they just ran the Virgin line with the Deoxys and the Shaman. Although, even older than that, they'd run Jirachi over Shaman, but you never know. Looks like my opponent has part of his beard on his face, because his program is dumb. It's got that Dialga staring us down. Um, really, really tough decision right now, whether heads or tails. Uh, this could definitely lose you the game, if you call it wrong. So there's a lot of pressure on the line. I understand Breaker Mold's... Um, struggle to figure out whether he wants to go with heads or tails, as the coin flip is the most important part of the game. It's not, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> hopefully Harry's up, because this is not super fun to record, just staring at a coin. PTC Joe also might have glitched out because um, his timer isn't running down, so we will give it 30 more seconds, and I'm glad I did not quit. Yes, we would like to go first. Okay. So it took a whole minute for him to decide that for some reason. And we're going to start Baby Ultal, which is our favorite starter. So that's pretty good. Uh, not the best hands. I'd say it's actually a pretty crappy hand. I think we're forced to go Shaman here, which is unfortunate. Uh, that's not terrible, though. So let's see what my opponent's playing. He's got the Celebi Sleeves, but... A lot of people have them, so that doesn't tell you anything about the deck. And if he's playing Celebi, then we should win pretty convincingly, because it's terrible. <laughs> My brother is obsessed with playing Celebi, and it's really dumb. It's it's not good. Maybe I'll show you some of the ridiculous lists he plays. He, he really was set on playing Night March with uh, no Shaman at this past League Challenge. Uh, so we played a Slurpuff line. It was it was really mediocre, but it was kind of annoying because I had played no EXs, so I was forced to take exactly six knockouts. And then, you know, like Puzzle of Time, you don't really run out of DC, so I guess in certain matchups, like, that's actually pretty strong. Like the Mirror, where there's no way for you to bench a Shaman that your opponent can take advantage of, so you just target Whistle and kill your opponents and win. Seems pretty good. My opponent is taking his good old time. It's, he's running down to three minutes here. Um, and it looks like a spinner rack. This is an awkward hand. Uh, we're just going to shame it immediately. Um, I'll put the Fighting Fury Belt on this guy. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So, looks like we've got pretty much everything. The DC is not what I want to draw there. I'd like to set up for more than three, but we'll take what we can get. And oh my goodness, what is this? We will end our turn. 
My opponent has to bench something else, otherwise we could potentially just reverse valley and win. Uh, but we have double max elixir energy DC super rod. Yikes. Um, if we top deck a dark ray or an evil tall EX, we can power them up very, very quickly. Uh, or even an ultra ball, but you know, with another ultra ball, I'm probably going to have to look for a shaman and my opponent passes. So let's see if we can win here. Um, we can if we hit this one. Yeah, we do. So evil tall swings for base 60. So we can actually just evil ball for the game. I don't know what my opponent was doing. How do you have seven unplayable cards? How does it even happen? But oh well. We spend five minutes waiting for my opponent to go. So really solid first two games here. Lots of competition. Um, we donked my opponent Spinarak and uh, Totina quit on us because we got started. So lovely. Uh, maybe this will be the last game because my intro is pretty long and I don't want these videos to be super long so I'm a baller at calling coin flips today let's go let's go first uh, this looks like an evil tall mirror because he's dark type I don't really want to bench toe in this matchup um, let's see I guess it could be something else um, looks like it's just a Zorak which is fine I'm going to play the Reverse Valley, because a lot of times these decks only play Reverse Valley. And so if we get it out first, that prevents my opponent from doing it. Here's a Shaman. I'm sorry, here's an Ultra Ball, which is going to net us a Shaman. I'm going to hold on to the Via Seeker. Um, Switch doesn't do a whole lot for us here, and Toad's not great in this matchup. Um, I'll try to do my best not to bench too many things because he definitely plays Zorark. We don't know exactly what else he is. It just could be YZG, but uh, we also didn't see uh, Fighting type in the preview. I mean, that doesn't really mean a lot, but whatever. Okay, so we hit both of those. I totally forgot to look at the other cards, whatever. Um, I'm bad. The question here is do I Hex Maniac and prevent him from, from playing Shaman? Or do I not play Hexmaniac and prevent him from float stoning? And I think the Hexmaniac is more important. I think he's more likely to have an out to Ultra Ball and a Shaman than he is to just have a float stone. So maybe this is a misplay, maybe not. I don't really know. Um, I, I think it's pretty safe either way. So here's an Ultra Ball, so um, he's definitely going to be able to grab something other than a Shaman, which is good. Actually, it looks like it's possibly a mirror match, which is pretty cool. I mean, maybe only just has like a Darkrai tech in, but uh, I, he plays Elixir, so this looks just like the essentially same deck we're playing. Unfortunately, he does have a Sycamore, so he doesn't have to search out the Shaman, uh, and he has the Float Stone. Okay, well, oh well. <laughs> I mean, there's there's no way I could have known, so. Yeah, he's going to get off a big Dark Pulse here. And... We just get energy. So... I think we'll just retreat. And we could Hex Maniac. I'd, I'd rather keep one card in my hand in, taste, in case we top deck an Ultra Ball and we have to go for another Shaman. Um, but this is not looking like the best start for us. Opponent drops down another energy. Of course, he's got another Sycamore. I would really love one of those right now, but we are not drawing a whole lot. Only hitting the Hex. Um, yeah, it's rather unfortunate I played that Hex earlier. Um, I think it was the better decision, it just didn't work out in my favor. He's going to take a Birch off the Trainer's Mail, which means he definitely has a support for this turn. Play his Battle Compressor, I do not. I don't like discarding resources. Um, but I assume he's just going to drop like three supporters here. 
plays Fisherman? What the hell? This list is weird. He's got Dark Pulse 4 90, so he's swinging for more damage than we are. Um, and we get another via Seeker. Come on. Okay. Um, we can attach to the Baby Evil Tall or Shaman. I think that makes more sense. And then we'll Dark Pulse for also 90. Yeah, this is bad. Um, if I'd actually attached to Shaman and then Sky Return, I could Sky Return it into Baby Evil Tall and then that kills his Darkrai. Maybe that was a better play, but we're so far behind, I don't know if it matters too much. Here's the Birch. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're pretty behind here. Uh, Tails, that's good for us. Um, there's another Darkrai and a Max Elixir. He whiffs and knocks us out. For 110. Okay. So. I think we'll promote this and hopefully we top deck something. An evil Tolly X. And we pass. And. Yeah. This is probably over. Uh, we could have sacked Shaman, but I don't really know what that accomplishes. If we get nothing here, we're just scooping. Finally get a Sycamore off two VS Seekers. That's terrible. Um, okay, let's see. How do we come back from this? We need to kill this, definitely. I think we just only need to kill the X's. Mm. So we probably want a Y Cyclone and then A Z. Put that there. Uh, we can put the EXP share on. That's fine. And then, wow, we're down a lot of energy. Um, we'll DC Y Cyclone the DC, knock him out, and then Sycamore. He's gonna Birch instead of Sycamore. It's a questionable play. I mean, I guess it depends on his hand, but it works out for him. He gets heads. Really could have used the tails there. There's another Max Elixir. There's another one. So he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven energy on board. Oh, and that's just going to one-shot us. So, um, yeah, we're, we're not going to be able to pick this one up, which is all right. But <laughs> that's pretty harsh. Um, we just had some ridiculously bad luck in the starting turns. I mean, we'll finish it out. Why not? Um, there's a bunch of energy. We'll grab the ones with the League promo sticker on it. That's fine. Um, Dark Pulse. That does exactly enough to take the first knock out of the game. Maybe he'll whiff and we'll just go crazy here. That would be great, but he promotes Darkrai, so I assume he has Lice in for game. There's another Floatstone. Plays three Floatstone, apparently. Here comes a Zorark. That can hit us for a decent amount of damage. I mean, yeah, it's definitely less than Dark Pulse. Here's a Sigmore, so there's no Lysander, that's good. Trainer's Mail. Or is a raw sick. But he can't play it this turn, which is nice. Otherwise he would just be able to get rid of our DC and then we wouldn't be able to attack. I mean right now we're not attacking for a whole lot of damage, but there's Dark Pulse for 150. Okay, well, let's see. Um, how many elixirs do we have left? Two. Okay, so if I can AZ this guy up, I need to hit this though. Cool. Cool. 
Let's see, what can I get rid of? You two. I won't take anything. And then we will drop this. I'm trying to keep my bench as small as possible just so that um, we don't lose the Zork. Um, we'll take a Judge. Swing for 90. Yeah, that's not going to be enough. Um, he's just doing too much damage. And at any point, if he gets a Lysander, he wins. There's Zork Break. That's actually a problem. Because uh, now he can Dark Pulse uh, without having any X active, and we can't afford to kill Zork. Uh, there's the last end for game, so good game to Ev Bone. Um, yeah, GG, man. I, that was more like a mirror than I expected to be. I don't see this kind of variant too often online. Uh, usually, if people are playing Evil Tall, it's just like the Zork late one, not. The one with um, Darkrai from Breakpoint. I think Turbo Darkrai is an alright meta call. Let's look at it again. Because, um, I mean, you've just got pretty neutral matchups across the board. Um, I played against Minetric the other day, and it didn't seem terrible just because Dark Pulse does a lot of damage, and you have Fright Knight to shut off their, uh, their tools, so their Spirit Link, so it wastes a turn. Uh, Night March, you've got all these non X attackers, you've got this huge beefy attacker that forces them to use Joltik and get rid of your tool card to one-shot you, and then you've got things like Delinquent and Judge and Hex to slow them down as well. Um, I mean, I guess, like, someone pointed out that, like, YGZ could be a big issue because the Glade one-shots through Dark Rise, but... In that matchup, you kind of just really rely on your Evil Talls and your Evil Tall EXs, so that's fine. Um, I mean, Evil Tall Mirrors are always going to be difficult, but that's difficult on both sides. It's not like it's just like you lose to it. Yeah, so... And then Toad matchup, as you saw me, my Toad Tina opponent just quit. Um, pretty favorable, just because you run so many energies. It's hard for them to just run you out of energies, and then you swing for so much damage with Evil Tall EX. So, we'll, we'll go ahead and open up that pack, because why not? Oh, trading back in line. That's cool. Packs. Um, yeah. We'll open up this guy. Uh, I know these are really tradable, but I need that fourth full art shaman, so you never know. Because I'm not, I'm not going to spend the packs to trade for it. And we got a Swellow with Delta Plus. Now, there is good news. We did complete our playset of Swellow, although I probably have some reverses too. Yeah. So, <laughs> either way, um, maybe I can make this work in something. I don't know. It's like the Articuno, but it only does 30. 50 for a third energy? We'll, we'll see. I, I, might, I might make something work out of it. Um, probably just like a fun league deck, but whatever. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to have to awkwardly quit again. I don't think I can just get out of this program because it's still messed up. Yeah, so I'm just going to show you my desktop real quick, and then uh, I will catch you guys next time.